curious about building a magnetic loop antenna? Lately, I built a magnetic loop antenna by myself that I can even tune remotely. I documented the steps and in this video, I'm going to share with you some practical information and tips. Let's get started. Hi, I'm Tamir N6JJ and welcome to the Reham Radio Channel. What's the idea behind the magnetic loop antenna and why are so many people interested about it? We all know that when we are transmitting or receiving RF, we are actually sending and receiving electromagnetic waves. Most of the antennas out there, like the dipole, beam or Yagi for example, are using the electric field of the wave, while the magnetic loop antenna is using the magnetic field of the wave. Thanks to that, the magnetic loop antenna will be much smaller than the other antennas and that gives us the opportunity to use the antenna in small places when you may have maybe some HOA restriction, even for your balcony. Another great benefit of the magnetic loop antenna is that it's directional and it's easy to change the direction if we compare that to the dipole. The dipole is also directional, but most of the chances that your setup is a static direction. My idea was to build the antenna that will be able to use for the 20, 30 and 40 meters and that then can use up to 100 watt. To calculate the details of my antenna, I used an online calculator. That calculator takes into consideration the length, the circumference of the main loop, the diameter of the conductor, the frequency and the transmitting power that I want to use. Thanks to that calculator, you can play with the numbers and find the best configuration for your setup. I'll put the link for that calculator and even for some other calculators in the description of this video. Let me show you the components of the antenna and how I choose to install them. Let's talk about the main loop. The length, the circumference is 10 feet, 3 meters. I see lots of people online talking about how hard it is to make the loop and which tools to use. I'm going to show you a simple way to make the loop in a few minutes and without any tools. For that, I use half inch flexible copper, easy to handle and no tools are needed. With my hand, I just opened the circle slowly, slowly in balance all over the circle. Let me show you how I did it. And as you can see, a nice circle was ready in a few minutes. Now let's talk about the coupling loop, the driven loop. It's a small loop where the quarks will be connected to. The main rule for that small loop is that it needs to be about one-fifth or 20% from the main loop. I use 3 8 inch with again flexible copper to easy handle it and without tools. As you can see, I stretch that a bit, so instead of a circle shape, it looks like more like an oval. The reason is that we want more area of the small loop to be closer to the main loop. This will help us a lot with lowering the SWR. Then I soldered the SO239 connector to connect the coax. Now about the matching unit. It built from a capacitor, a stepper motor, and a coupling unit. The L capacitor in my case is a 40 to 430 picofarad. And as you can see, the space between the plates is wide, and that means that we can use it for high transmitting power. I tested it with 100 watts without any problem. I found it with a good price on eBay. You just need a bit of patience to find it in the right deal for you. Please remember that when transmitting with high power, the voltage that can be developed on the capacitor can get to a few thousand volts and maybe more. Never be close or touch it while transmitting. And I mean it, don't even think about it. For personal safety and for keeping the part secured, I installed all the components in a standard plastic box.
in my case, I wanted a remote Unix solution that I can control for my station wirelessly, so I can skip the need of running more cables for control. I built the remote matching unit from a capacitor, stepper motor and coupling unit using a hard wood rod. The wood rod helps with isolating the capacitor from the stepper motor, so no voltage will go down to the stepper motor. You can use even a hard plastic rod as long as it will not develop any torsion. As you can see in my first version, I used a flexible coupling pieces, but I got some torsion that made the tuning process very hard. So I replaced them with non-flexible pieces. That helped a lot. Let me show you how that works. As you can see, I can use my phone for scanning. You can see the capacitor is moving there. I can use the tuning feature and even a fine tuning feature. I already created a special video that covers in details how to build the remote tuning unit and I'll put a link to that video in the description. As mentioned already, you can see full details on how the remote unit is built in a separate video that I made. But here I want to show you how I installed all the components in an old USB drive case. It's easy and cheap. As you can see, I'm connecting the unit using Velcro to one of the tripod legs. The benefit of that is that the unit is far from the matching unit when high voltage can be there and also there is no interference between the RF and the Wi-Fi signals that control the units. For easy storage and portable use, I added the snap clamps to the plastic box so I can easily connect and disconnect the matching unit from the one inch PVC mast. The top of the main loop is connected to the mast with a 90 degree T-shaped PVC piece and that holds the loop to the mast. And again, it's easy to connect and disconnect when needed. And all of that is based on a stable tripod. I'm going to show you three pictures that I used a nano VNA to get some visibility on how the magnetic loop antenna behaves on each of the band during my tests. Now, after we talked about the antenna itself, let's see how it actually works in the practical way on how to tune a magnetic loop antenna. So let's see how we can tune the magnetic loop antenna. The first step, I'm going to use my phone to control the capacitor and tune it to the point that we can hear the band with the best uh, signal. Let's see. And if you're going too far, it's going down. So we're going to tune the capacitor to the other side. That's it. I think we have the max signal for now. So that's for the hearing step. Now let's move and try to actual tune. I'm going to use five watts for the tuning. And let's see how the SWR will looks like. Okay. Let's see the SWR view. I'm going to put my application here and we're going to start the tuning. All right, now let's start with the fine tuning and let's wait for the needles that will start to move. We can see it now with small steps. One point five, one point seven. Let's start one more move. Yep, 1.4 even. 
If I will continue, you will see that the needle will go to the other side. That means we passed that point. Let's go back. That's it. 1.4. Excellent. We have it. Okay, so that was with 5 watts. Let's change the scale. And instead of 5, let's put 30 watts and test that. Nice. Let's put 75. Nice. Now I'm going to set to 100 watts on the magnetic loop. Yep, and we see that we're around 90 watts and SWR is around 1.6. Uh, this is a great tuning. That's a success. Okay, so in the last 30-40 minutes, I did some FT8 QSOs to check how the magnetic loop antenna is working. And I'm using the PSK reporter uh, to check how my signal received in uh, all these places. And uh, let's split it based on band. Let's try to start with the 20 meters in the last hour. And I'm just reminder, reminding that I'm located here in the West Coast in California. So as you can see, the 20 meters, uh, I hit uh, the US all over, mainly on the East Coast and West Coast, less in, in the middle. It could be that it's just the propagation at this hour, but still, um, um, I'm using 30 watt. That's all, 30. So that uh, looks great. I even see that I got some signal in Hawaii and even some one signal from Russia. Interesting. Let's check the 30 meter, the 10 megahertz. Yeah, we can see that it's less activity at this hour on the 30 meters, but still 30 watt. All the US got me without any problems. Uh, even Alaska, I see signal without any problem. Let's go to the 40 meter, the 7 megahertz. Yep, much more activity. Um, I see that I got signal, I, the signal received all over the US, even uh, South America, Argentina. I see here New Zealand got me and even some islands here uh, like um, Canary Islands. Uh, almost I hit Europe, but still 30 watts. Uh, from California with the magnetic loop antenna looks great. Let's see it uh, for all the bands again Just a beautiful signals uh, This really amazing a great antenna working great with 30 watt. I think it's a great success. We really recommend this antenna And that's it. I hope that I was able to help you and it gave you some practical ideas and details on how the magnetic loop antenna is built and it will help you to build yours now, if you want to help, the best way to support this channel is by like the video and subscribe to the channel in the loop, here. And I want to thank you for that in advance. Thanks for watching 73.